Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're meeting the Dogo Argentino. Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the sporting Dogo Argentino. <laughs> wow! Animal Watch has now met both the show line and the working line Dogo Argentino in person at the request of our viewers who have been asking us to cover this breed for so long. Our Dogo is banned in the UK and many other countries, regardless to his lineage. But today we will explain to you the differences between both the working and show line and reveal which one is considered to be the most powerful, the largest, the fittest, the most prey driven and the best for pet homes. Are there enough differences between the two lines to actually mean that one deserves a reprise in the UK law more than the other one? Find out today. Don't go away. His muscles ripple and then bang, he goes from stop to start when another dog approaches, a reaction which has got him into a lot of trouble. So much trouble that he is banned from many countries, including the UK. Described by some as one of the world's most unstable and dangerous dogs. But is this true for the show line as well as the working? A line created for the show ring alone and described as being not only physically different to the working line, but perhaps different too in character. The Dogo Argentino can trace its roots back to Argentina in 1928. A doctor named Antonio Norris Martinez wanted to create a dog that was suitable for big game hunting, especially wild boar, as well as a good watchdog and family companion. And so he created the Dogo Argentino. He was created first and foremost with the Cordoba fighting dog. This breed is extinct today, but it was said that it was a large and ferocious dog with great hunting skills. Martinez crossed it with the Great Dane, Boxer, Spanish Mastiff, Old English Bulldog, Bull Terrier, Pyrenean Mastiff, English Pointer, Irish Wolfhound and Dog de Bordeaux. I am aware that it is illegal to own one in my country. However, dog attack records show no Dogo Argentino fatalities. So why is this huge, beautiful guardian breed feared so much in England? I was determined to make up my own mind for myself to whether this breed has been unfairly labeled and whether the show line is now different to the working line he has descended from. Let the court session commence. Number one, physical differences. Working line. The working line is described by various sources to stand between 24 to 27 inches high. And this is the same generally as the show line. The real difference comes with body shape. The working line Dogo Argentino was created to be fast and athletic and with this comes a tight muscular physique and a tapered rear end. However, like many other working breeds that are bred for the show ring, certain physical differences start to appear. For the Dogo, it most certainly was width and thickness. The show line is far broader across the chest and certainly wider across the back, the rear end and skull. This gives the appearance of being shorter than the working line, where in fact they are roughly the same height. Large show line males will weigh more generally than the working line too. By breeding certain dogos together to create this show look, they start to have their own genetics, as gamey tapered physiques are not desired in the show ring, replaced by this broader look. With their own show genetics, other traits are bred for, which include temperament. Number two temperament. The Dogo Argentino was bred originally to hunt large prey, such as wild boar. So to do this, they must have an extremely high prey drive, be extremely fast and fit. The working line certainly has this energy about them. In fact, they almost scream with desire when they lay eyes upon a prey animal or another dog in the distance. You may argue, 
Why on earth do some Dogo Argentino want to get to other dogs? Well, the Cordoba fighting dog in their ancestry was known for serious same-sex aggression. And in a working environment, farmers and hunters in Argentina would have worked the dogs so hard that they wouldn't have had the energy or time to want to fight. Unfortunately, bored house pets from the working line will most likely show this negative side to their character. More with dog fights with other dominant dogs at the dog park, or even dogs sharing their own house. They also have excessive energy, so a working line as a pet is going to cause a few issues unless walked really hard, under control at all time in public areas. They can also be stubborn from their independent Mastiff ancestry, so recall isn't going to be great, especially if they see that prey animal or feisty dog in the distance. The show line is definitely calmer, as his larger, heavier physique makes it harder to be more energetic. Also, it's desirable for show lines to walk well in the show ring, so bad-tempered dogs would most likely be rejected from breeding programs, resulting in calmer, less same-sex aggressive offspring. Don't be fooled, though, by this calmness, as he still has prey drive in there, and a desire to challenge members of the same sex. Be sure you're strong enough to hold this dog back, as he will pull you off your feet. Also remember that in any dog litter, there will be feistier and more energetic puppies, as well as dopey, laid-back ones. You can get very different characters, so choose with care. Number 3. Human Aggression So if this breed can be prey-driven and same-sex aggressive, is he aggressive to humans? Firstly, this breed is banned in the UK, not because he has a history of fatal attacks, but because the UK presumed he would be trouble. He was banned before he even had a track record for attacks due to his hunting genetics, high prey drive and size. In reality, he's no worse or better than any other working dog breed. He loves humans and is super affectionate. He adores children and will guard them. The trouble comes with bad breeding and bad training. Bad genetics can create bad-tempered dogs. If people are breeding just for money and don't care what they breed from, bad breeders won't bother to socialize the puppies and sometimes will sell unsocialized adults, which with any large dog breed is an accident waiting to happen. These dogs are not child aggressive or human aggressive if raised correctly and bred from good lines and their energy worked out of them by a conscientious owner. Owners should never leave any child unattended with a large dog breed, especially one not raised with the family, as kids sometimes jump on dogs and even torture them. There is only so much a dog will put up with if the child is not kind to him. The show and working lines are both non-human aggressive. However, the lesser energy of the show line means he'll probably be more relaxed in the house and less likely to knock over a small child. Conclusion So out of the following, here are my results. Who is the largest? The show line wins this, as their stocky muscular physique is much broader than their working line cousins. Who is the fittest? The working line wins hands down here. His physique is almost perfect for running and hunting large prey. Who is the most powerful? Both as powerful, but in different ways. The show line male carries more muscle and weight, so his power will come more in short bursts, and he'll still pull you off your feet. The working line is more powerful in endurance and probably pulling down prey at speed. Who is most prey driven? I'm going to go with the working line here, as no calming genetics added here for the show ring. However, as far as same-sex aggression, both the show line and working line seemed same-sex aggressive to me. Who has the best temperament? The show line wins due to his tampered down character, which has made him calmer to both humans and other dogs. However, if it's craziness you're after, then the working line's your boy. Best pet? For the average family, definitely the show line as he'll deal better with a more sedentary lifestyle. However, if you're a keen outdoors person, the working line is going to be more up your street with higher endurance and energy. 
So what verdict has the Animal Watch Court come to today on the fate of this breed? And should one or the other Dogo Argentino lines be pardoned in the UK? We believe here at Animal Watch that all dogs are innocent until proven guilty. Sadly, it's the human handling and breeding from bad genetics which causes accidents. We can see equally powerful prey-driven breeds in the UK already. And for this reason, the Dogo Argentino should also be allowed to exist here. What we do feel is that bad breeding must be controlled by licensing owners and breeders according to the strength and predatory nature of their dogs. Backyard breeding can be stopped with fines and licensing. Good ownership comes from teaching people how to train their dogs, and this can only happen when all dog breeds are legal and out in the open. Set up a tier system. The most challenging dogs being licensed with a grade 10. More money needing to be paid in order to own one and showing proof of dog training courses. If you would like to watch the Dogo Argentino episodes we made on the show line and the working line, please click on the links in the information bar above as well as the links after the credits. And if you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every week where I'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation and wildlife. Bye for now.